constantly relearn and reinforce the basics of the Christian life. Thank you, Vicar. <laughs> right on cue. <laughs> Does anybody know what this is? The Chicago Bears kind of even know what this is this year. <laughs> right? How many of you remember way back when in the 60s, there was a team up north, we will not mention their name, there was a team up north that won a couple of Super Bowls, and yet the next year after that second Super Bowl win, they weren't quite as good and they actually lost the game. And so afterward, their legendary coach, Vince Lombardi, gathered together all of those players and he said, gentlemen, we have to begin with the basics. And so he did exactly this. He said, gentlemen, this is a football. Because we all forget from time to time. Even professionals have to train and drill and be reminded regularly on how to play the game. There was one smart aleck, Max McGee, you might have heard of him. After Coach Lombardi said, this is a football, he said, Coach, slow down, you're going way too fast. <laughs> we need to constantly relearn and reinforce the basics, worship, Bible study, serving, giving, prayer, and on and on. It's why we have a children's message every week. It's why we have worship every week. It's why we have the Lord's Supper every week. So that we can grow and mature and be fed and nourished. We must constantly relearn and reinforce the basics. Now I've gone through three things and the stuff that we all know that we ought to be doing. But let us never, ever forget number four. It's why we are ending here. The main end of life is not just to study Jesus. The main end of life is not to memorize the Bible. It's not just to recite the commandments. The main end of life is to know and to love Jesus as Savior and Lord. Way too many families are more concerned about getting their children into Harvard, Harvard than they are in getting the children into heaven. As important as education is, and we know that it is for this life, Christian values, Christian education, Finally, knowing Jesus Christ is the most important thing. Back in 1636, the trustees of that esteemed institution of Harvard University, they put out a statement, and it read something like this. Let every student be plainly instructed and earnestly pressed to consider well that the main end of his studies in life, studies and life, is to know God and Jesus Christ. Now it makes no difference that they don't necessarily follow that anymore, but the wisdom of those words still holds true today. My friends, the greatest need of children, children of the Heavenly Father, children of all ages, is to know the love of Jesus. The good news for us, that unlike those goslings who if they are not imprinted properly in the first hours of their life, in God's economy, in God's scheme, in God's plan. Even though the very best time to plant that tree was 15 years ago, even though the very best time is to begin teaching our children at birth, we can still begin 
today. And it is my prayer as we begin this Christian education hour, as we begin Rally Day, that you too would impress upon all the children of our church and our community the love of Jesus Christ. May that be our main concern for Jesus' sake and for the sake of our children. Amen. Let's all rise now and profess our faith this morning through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty. pray I will end each petition with Lord in your mercy please respond hear our prayer we come before you O Lord in prayer saying along with the psalmist turn to me and be gracious to me as is your way with those who love your name O Lord you spoke through your servant Moses instructing us to teach your word to future generations grant us diligence in sharing Christ with our children and our children's children that they may know him as their Savior Lord in your mercy Hear our O Lord, the Apostle Paul warns us of Satan and his schemes. We thank you that you do not leave us defenseless, but give us your armor to guard and defend us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our o Lord, you have the power to heal and to restore, and so we humbly ask that you look with favor upon the sick and hurting in body, mind, or spirit, especially John Laurie, Stephanie Keerly, Jim Kirk, Joyce Montgomery, Kathy Flynn, and Jean Dorn. Lord, we also pray for the family and friends of Ray Howman as you bring them comfort as he has passed into glory this week. Give strength to them and restore them according to your perfect will. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Oh Lord, we thank you for those who serve on behalf of others, including teachers, first responders, and those in the armed forces of our land. Watch over and bless these individuals as they fulfill these vocations with selflessness and honor. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord, you give us faithful hearts with which to receive your Son's body and blood at your table. Grant that it strengthen and sustain us in the one true faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, I'd like to welcome forward anyone who is involved in Christian education here at Emmanuel. So whether you are a Sunday school teacher, adult Bible class teacher, confirmation teacher, mentor, helper, day school teacher, whatever you might do, please come forward. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Dear brother and sisters in Christ, you have come to be placed as teachers in our uh, uh, education hour or other Christian education program of this congregation, a work in which our Father in heaven has great joy. You are to assist the ministry of the word and sacraments by instructing God's children according to his holy word. You are to prepare yourselves for this work by your individual and corporate study of the Word of God and the faith drawn from it as it has been delivered to us in the creeds and confessions of the Evangelical Lutheran Church. While holiness of life and work is the way of all who trust in Christ, it is especially important that you show yourselves by word and example to be patterns of good works and Christian devotion. 
And so in the presence of God and of this congregation, I therefore ask you, do you accept the offices entrusted to you? And do you promise faithfully to carry out your duties, trusting in him and conforming yourself to his word in accordance with the faith of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? If so, answer, I do. And so I place each of you then in your position in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty and most merciful God, our Heavenly Father, enlighten and strengthen you in your role that you may be good and faithful servants to the glory of his name and the salvation of his people. Amen. Why don't you go ahead and turn around. Let's give them a round of applause and appreciation. You may be seated. At this time, we're going to be collecting our offerings.
Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for these gifts that we've received, the gifts that we've received from you, and we pray that they go to good works in your kingdom, to reach those who don't know you, and to grow our children in the one true faith. Please join me in prayer as we pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you, this do, in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and after he had given thanks, and he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you, for the remission of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And now the peace of the Lord be with you always. Please take a moment to share the peace of the Lord with one another.